I feel like we still hear it all the time. Phones are just getting too big. And we're not even talking about foldables. We're talking about straight up normal smartphones. The thing is, uh, there are options for smaller form factors, but often they come with particular compromises. Why don't we have a small, easy to use phone that has all of the power and capabilities of the big phones? Asus has actually been consistently offering something that answers that question. And with the latest version of their smartphone, it seems they're keeping the attitude of, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. The only thing is, I think it's becoming a little bit too familiar at this point. So let's talk about it because it's Joshua Vergara. What's going on, everybody? Here is the Asus Zenfone 10, week one. As it turns out, I have quite a lot of thoughts regarding the Zenfone 10, so we might need to pace ourselves. And uh, with that in mind, I'm gonna take the tea break now because I do have a sponsor for this video. After the break, I'll talk to you about what is a super similar but still important next step for the Zenfone line. The front-facing camera is so narrow that I feel the need to go vertical just to fit stuff into the frame. Uh, anyway, shout out to the homie uh, Mark Lin Sangin. Uh, he's a big Celsius fan. Anyway, for the tea break in this video, I actually do have a sponsor for this video, and it is Soundcore by Anchor. Uh, to be fair, uh, Celsius does use green tea extract, so technically it is still tea related. But in any case, let's go ahead and get into that break, and let's hear from our friends over at Soundcore. Now, if you're looking to accessorize with a pair of high quality earbuds, how about a pair of affordable yet powerful noise canceling headphones, courtesy of the sponsor of this video, Soundcore by Anchor. Soundcore reached out to me to check out their latest release, and these are the Liberty 4 NC. The NC there stands for noise canceling, and that definitely belongs in the name. There's everything here that you would want from a pair of premium earbuds. 11 millimeter drivers that support LDAC, touch controls on the top of the stem, fast pair to Android devices, and multi-point connectivity. 10 hours of playback is also possible here too, with a total of 50 hours made possible thanks to this charging case. Those lights are a real nice touch back there, and putting the earbuds back in this case for just 10 minutes brings back four hours of playback. But the noise cancellation here is the evolution of Soundcore's own adaptive ANC upgraded to version 2.0. What you get is a combination of an in-ear sound sensor, a highly sensitive low distortion driver, and a noise isolation chamber. All of them work together to create an active noise cancellation that Soundcore claims reduces noise by 98.5%. But if noise levels change because my environment changes or I relocate, the adaptive ANC 2.0 will actually detect all of the sound from both my ear canal and the outside environment to change the filter accordingly. It's just a quick two second detection and the noise cancellation can sound exactly the way it needs to for wherever I might be. And fundamentally, these earbuds do sound pretty great. The ANC just adds to a sound profile that Soundcore have been developing for years now. The Soundcore Liberty 4 NC are available now for the pretty affordable price of $99, which is impressive considering how well the noise cancellation performs, their long battery life, and the customizable signature sound. Make sure you check out the links in the description below, and thanks to Soundcore for letting me check out the Liberty 4 NC and for sponsoring this video. Yes, we are now at number 10 for the Zenfone, a phone lineup from ASUS that has seen quite a few evolutions over the years. Since I haven't done a video on a Zenfone in quite some time, I'm gonna give you a quick history lesson, and I'll also share a little bit of my own personal journey recently. Gone are the days of the flippy dippy camera, which was a head turner, quite literally. <laughs> and now we're in the Zenfone era of small but mighty. That originally occurred with the Zenfone 8 a couple years back, which was refreshing because it was as powerful as we would want a flagship to be just shrunken down. And then there was the Zenfone 9, which I actually never did a video on, but I was so interested in trying it out that I bought it and I kept it. It's the phone that I used when I took a break at the end of 2022, stepping away not only from work, but also from social media entirely. And you know what? It was quite literally a Zen experience. And it was a great example of how committed ASUS was to injecting their brand identity in stylish ways. That's the phone I brought with me to run my first ever 5K, and the phone that I recorded my victory on as I crossed the finish line. And then I took it with me into 2023, expecting it to stay my main device. I always say that about Zen phones because I love them but tech doesn't stop evolving and inevitably I move on because that's just the nature of my job. And now you would think that the Zenfone 10 would keep up with those kinds of evolutions, but after a week of using this on the daily, I have to admit, I find myself a little conflicted. The Zenfone 10 remains a very stylish device from materials to the flourishes in a way that we have come to expect from ASUS. While the size of the phone is a big contributor to an easy handling experience, props have to be given for this matted back material that provides even more grip. And the smaller size doesn't mean that the Zenfone skimps on many of the amenities you might want from a flagship, including, well, a headphone jack. I've connected a couple of pairs of headphones into this headphone jack and it sounds pretty great and is complete with customizable sound settings. Those settings work for both wired and 
and wireless audio, so if you have a pair of true wireless earbuds, they will also sound great with the Zenfone 10. Easier ergonomics do mean that there are plenty of obvious compromises. I mean, this display is just under 6 inches in size while sticking to full HD plus resolution. Higher resolutions would have been appreciated, but when the screen is this physical size, there can be diminishing returns for general users. Still, it looks plenty sharp and sports a 144Hz refresh rate. As an AMOLED display, it's still a great looker and is super comfortable for use in daily tasks. I have to give props to ASUS for really leaning into the whole idea that this phone should be comfy for one-handed usage. For example, there's even a reachability feature right here, the one-handed mode, uh, that pulls everything down to make it easier to reach stuff. And then there is the swipeable power button that provides the ability to bring down the notification shade just by swiping on that button. This button also has the fingerprint reader embedded, uh, so you have multiple uses in what ASUS calls the smart key. Practicality is just the name of the game here, and it's really appreciated among a sea of phones that are throwing feature after feature into their software packages that most users might not actually use on the regular. But that's not to say ASUS is being too modest. Another reason why I really enjoy the Zenfone lineup is because inspiration from their high-powered and honestly overachieving ROG phones can be felt. After all, you're looking at one, if not the, smallest smartphones rocking the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2, bringing all that power and performance. After that, there's 16 gigabytes of RAM, up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and up to 512 gigabytes of storage. After that, the Zen UI takes a few cues from the ROG lineup with features like the Game Genie for optimizing performance during gaming. Of course, there's that super high refresh rate screen. And then there are some features you might not immediately notice, like dual band Wi Fi. I have a Wi Fi 6E router in my office, and it does also broadcast a 2.4 gigahertz channel alongside the main network. Both the ROG and the Zen phone connect to them simultaneously for better stability and bandwidth. It's great for gaming, but it's just also great in general. In just one week so far with this phone, I haven't had any issues getting from morning to sleep with plenty of battery to spare. First off, the Zenfone 10 now supports wireless charging, added on top of the 30 watt hypercharge wired speed. There is a 4300 milliamp hour battery here that is larger than before, but ASUS seems to optimize the Zenfone 10 to have good standby time. That can be set further with battery optimizations, which includes four different levels of adjustment. I actually like setting this phone to durable because it turns off enough things that at one point, I I got back home from a long day out that included camera usage, and I still had 40% battery life remaining by dinner time. Sure, some notifications don't come through until I unlock the phone myself, but I kind of like that. It adds to the idea that a Zen phone should add to the Zen that I'm looking for on the daily. Back when I was using the Zen Phone 9 for my extended break, I wanted to go all in on the Zen as I took time off. And now that I'm using the Zen Phone 10 now, I have the same desires and feelings. So with that in mind, I think that ASUS has done a good job of continuing what the Zen Phone 9 already achieved last year, creating the best small phone experience in Android that year. I think that the Zen Phone 10 can basically achieve that again, mostly because other manufacturers still haven't gotten it into their heads that people do want a smaller, easier to use, yet highly capable phone. See, if you ask me, practicality is kind of underrated. And if a phone can provide practicality and maybe even go further into, let's say, the realm of actual Zen, well, I'm gonna pay attention. There's just one problem here though, and it's where you might expect the cameras. Far be it for any of us to expect huge camera sensors on a phone that is trying to be as minimalist as possible, but it seems ASUS was content with basically everything that was offered last year that they're sticking to their guns for better or worse. What we get here is a 50 megapixel main sensor. It is the IMX766, a sensor we've had for years now and was found on the Zenfone 9 last year. It is supported by ASUS's patented gimbal system that makes for some of the most stable video I've captured on a smartphone. Now it's updated to version 2.0, which builds upon the combination of hardware and and software-based electronic stabilization. More shooting scenarios are thus possible, including light trail and long exposure capture, which can be done handheld now because of that stabilization. ASUS tends to be rather quiet about its picture processing, but honestly, it's up there among the more pleasing results. They've now added in the ability for AI to segment a photo into different parts and apply different processing to those different areas of the scene. It's still a good sensor, and just like with the Zenfone 9, I found it perfectly fine for when I was living my daily life away from social media. But then there's the content creator in me that can't help but feel like the growing trend of updated and one-inch sensors is kind of spoiling me. Even if the hardware doesn't necessarily back it up as much as I would want to, I still give ASUS a lot of props for trying to fit in as many things as possible. Even a pro video mode here that I definitely use for the exposure compensation dial here just to make life a little bit easier, it's still not something that we see on a lot of other flagship smartphones that boast better cameras. I guess
guess the uh, pictures and videos for this week one video are going to be from uh, my alma mater. <laughs> I haven't been here in a long time, but might as well go do a little bit of a tour since I'm just kind of bumming it in San Diego right now, just visiting. I am so sad because back when I was in college, right here was a lovely, well-tuned grand piano that I play almost every day. I probably annoyed everybody because I only knew like three or four songs, but it's gone. It's gone. It makes me so sad. And then you get the ultra wide camera, which is a 13 megapixel shooter that does the job, but is really nothing special. And then there's the front facing camera. First off, video just won't be this camera's forte. As usual, I'm going to look at the front facing camera, hope that 4K video is there. It is not on here. We have full HD uh, video at 30 frames per second. Also, it's not a very wide lens. I'm really stretching out right now. It looks like this uh, front, uh, this front shooter is mainly for selfies and portraits and whatnot. To that end though, uh, those pictures, they don't turn out too bad. I'm especially bummed by this because the Zenfone 9 did do 4K video on the front, but the focus seems to be different this year because ASUS introduced RGBW to this 32 megapixel sensor, which does seem to help with general capture. And I do think the colors on these selfies and portraits look pretty good. The resulting eight megapixel photos coming from this shooter are good, but that's about the extent of its evolution. In almost every aspect, the Zenfone 10 continues exactly what I loved about the Zenfone 9, but that is exactly where it now becomes a hard phone for me to designate as my main. At a time when I needed far less from my daily smartphones, the Zenfone made perfect sense. For many of you out there that don't need a big screen or the best camera, I can safely say that after a week with the Zenfone 10 and after months with the Zenfone 9, it's so great to have this option. But I still have the content creator side of me, and thus, I look at the Zenfone more as a refuge when I need, well, Zen. But ASUS hasn't done much to pull their latest phone up to the level of the other phones yet. So weirdly, the phone that I used to say could be applicable to everyone is slowly starting to become more and more niche as ASUS continues to stay the course. Whether or not that is a bad thing is up to each person. And personally, I don't think it's really all that bad. If anything, I'm just happy that the Zenfone is still an option in today's go big or go home smartphone landscape. I am just in a place now where I find myself wanting more, which means ASUS might need to reevaluate or at least shift what Zen means to them in the next one. And so there you have it, a look at the ASUS Zenfone 10. I adore Zenfones. I think that what they set out to do, they achieve very well. It's just that uh, I am one of those people that is able to look at the general landscape and find things in other phones that kind of speak to what I need at that moment. In this case, uh, it's mainly the cameras that make me sort of pull away from the Zenfone for the first time in a little while. And that's not necessarily ASUS's fault, although I will say they need to catch up a bit more uh, in order to make this the phone that I leave in my pocket just like I I did last year with the Zenfone 9. But still at the price that the Zenfone 10 comes in at, it's a great option for anybody that's looking to save a little bit of money and quite literally save some space in their pockets. Are you excited for the Zenfone 10? And actually, I want to know, let me know in the comments if you have used the previous Zenfones from back when the flippy dippy camera was there and uh, then the Zenfone 8 and 9, which I still, all of them, I proudly say I used them for quite a while when they came out. It just might change a little bit with the Zenfone 10. In any case, let me know in the comments. And uh, from there, I'm gonna go ahead and call it on this one. Thank you so much for kicking it with me again today. Please take care of yourselves and each other and enjoy your tea, everybody.